All right, let's dive right into this one. Jeffrey Gibson's sculptural object, Know Your Magic Baby, an Everlast brand exercise bag embroidered with multicolored beads and a fringe associated with the dances of the Ojibwa people, whew, stitches together, literally and figuratively, recognizable symbols from both native and non-native cultures. That's a big sentence. Gibson's piece also blurs the distinction between contemporary art and traditional crafts. Okay, so... We can look at the answer choices if we want here to gain a little bit of a kind of like place to stand on, right? So conversely is a fancy version of the word, but in so doing is kind of a weird one that doesn't really fit into one of my categories nicely. For instance is, you know, for example, we probably don't even need to write that to, to understand that. So is this an example? We'll ask that question. In particular, also maybe a weirder um, uh, transition word. It's not one that comes up very often. It To me though... <sighs> almost feels like another for example. And I think that that helps me here. I, I, I don't have that as one of the most common transition words. It's not part of my, my lesson on these four main transition word categories. But if I'm thinking about those categories, I'm like, okay, in particular, a particular example, a particular situation would be a, a more specific version of whatever came before it. So if I can categorize those two words as the same category, then I'm like, all right, well then the, the, the strategy is they can't both be right, right? If they're in the same category and they mean basically the same thing, how would one be right and the other be wrong? So that, that means it's unlikely that these two choices are correct. Now, I barely understood what was going on in these, these sentences because they're very complicated, but maybe now I can go back and start to make some more sense of it, right? So they're giving me the, this example, right? They're talking about this object and what it does, it uses, uh, I guess, a, an exercise bag with a dance, I guess, or some clothes associated with the dance. Um, so it's using recognizable symbols from both native and non-native cultures. So Gibson's piece also blurs the distinction between contemporary art and traditional crafts. So it sounds like there's a lot of blending going on, right? He's blending the native and non-native stuff. He's blending uh, the contemporary art and traditional crafts. So it doesn't seem like a, a conversely situation. There's no contrast here, right? The, the blending is happening in both things. We're not saying he's blending one thing, but being really, I don't know, rigid about something else. So that doesn't really make sense. And then again, I don't think it's going to be C and D because that's, they mean the same thing, but now I can maybe think about it and just be absolutely sure. Is the second sentence an example of the first? Well, he's, they're blending things, but they seem to be two different kinds of things, right? They're not then giving me an example of him blending the native and non-native cultures. In fact, that's what the first sentence itself does. That is the example. It's almost like they kind of reversed the transitions here to throw you off. They are providing an example, but that's how they started this passage. Then they kind of told us what it was an example of, right? So the example is, okay, we're taking the exercise bag, we're taking the, the native dancing clothes, and we're, we're blending those together. Together, and that is an example of us blending native and non-native cultures. So it's reversed. There is an example, but but there, that doesn't mean that that's what goes in the blank because that needs to the blank needs to be uh, an example that follows in the rest of that second sentence. So in so doing is kind of just what I have to pick because it's weird and it's the only thing left over. What does it actually mean? Personally, on the actual test, I would not care so much. I would just be like, all right, that's got to be it. Let's move on. But um, we can kind of talk about it. In so doing kind of means like because it's it's got a little bit of a cause and effect uh, kind of vibe to it, but um, maybe in this way is a more uh, familiar way of talking about it. I mean, in so doing is a, a phrase I use every day in my conversation, so it's not that weird, but maybe it's a little bit weirder for people who are learning English. Uh, in this way uh, is maybe a little bit more familiar. I don't know, but what's happening is. We are trying to say that these two things are related. Uh, they're maybe it's, it's almost like this is a, another bit of a stretch. It, similarly, I think it's a stretch. I don't think that that fits perfectly there, but it's behaving in that kind of way, right? It's saying there's two kinds of blending going on, the native and non-native and the uh, contemporary and traditional. So there's this kind of continuation, but also an adding on. Maybe a furthermore or a moreover would be nice in there as well. We don't have those choices. So B just kind of ends up 
fitting because nothing else fits. And that is a perfectly valid way to get these transition questions. I cannot stress this enough. Many times on the hardest transitions, I do not know what would go in that blank except by a process of elimination and kind of thinking about the main categories and dealing with any weird things that come up. So if you kind of pick something because everything else is bad, that is okay. Trust that process. That is a perfectly valid way to answer the hardest transition questions.